that I can save some time for you. I'll cover the presentation through uh, my views on the global scan and the Indian scan first, and then come to what we do at this point. And so far as the global primary energy sector is concerned, the consumption is re increasing in both OECD and... Can somebody mute yourself, please? Thank you. Everybody, please mute yourselves. Right, thank you. So the non-OECD uh, engagements in Asia, plus in Middle East, is increasing towards the renewable sector. And the growth till 2050 is substantial. So if you see the growth, you can tap around 18 to 28% uh, is going to be the growth. And uh, nearly 50% increase in the world energy usage, uh, primarily led by Asia. When we see the consumption of the energy source, uh, the renewables are going to rise from 15 to 28 percent in terms of the thermal units, and, and that is where uh, the biomass is also a part of it. If you further break down the growth in the next two, two decades to say, uh, these four decades are going to see a lot of other renewables and a lot of push to the bioenergy sector. So when you see the overall consumption and pattern of energy, three things emerge uh, quite clearly for us to take notice. First is the fossil fuel dependency is going to go down. Second is the modern renewables are on the rise. And third is the biofuels will need a push, whether it is globally or elsewhere. And from the previous presentation by Dr. Nour, uh, we were made you know, clear that there is obviously a definite push towards this. In the Indian energy sector scan, if you see, slowly we have had a growth in the renewable sector, including solar and other renewables. But solar has taken center stage, and with the creation of international solar lands, uh, we have seen a lot of push coming into that sector, even in India. If you see where we are, uh, we have to progress beyond the coal, beyond the nuclear, beyond the hydro, and actually beyond the solar, as far as global and Indian energy needs are concerned. If you see the energy demand and scenarios, in terms of traditional use of biomass, uh, we will have to, in the future, have an enhancement as we go ahead. And I am just a proponent of saying that in terms of million tons of take of biomass, it has to increase over the next three decades. The roadmap of our country is quite known. We know the targets we have set for 227 gigawatts for 2022. We have heard about this scheme uh, where the biofuel sector is getting a push. Uh, we have also heard about the ethanol sector, how uh, last, two, last week we had a subsidy infusion by the government of India in the four parts there. So this is how we are going and we being a significant to the unit climate action, uh, we need to be sure that we achieve our targets and have less dependency on the fossil fuels. Green hydrogen is something which is opening up in the Indian market today. But from all other sources, it will primarily require a lot of uh, biomass based you know, creation of this energy system. The investments have been colossal even during the pandemic, if you see, uh, the renewables has taken and clean mobility, biofuels have taken a lot of investment even in this period. And I'm from a company which you can say with you know, a lot of uh, positivity that uh, with a, you know, uh, double, doubling our income and revenues last year has been possible even through the pandemic period. If you see the key investors, just look at the names there on the screen, you will find that these industries are primarily looking at other renewable energies, uh, you know, uh, which is primarily in terms of solar and going into wind and some hydro projects. Not many of them are into the biomass based space. Similarly, if you see the FDIs, they just come into the India in the recent times, huge amount of investment, but certainly not much in the biomass sector. Similarly, if you see the key investment in Indian renewable energy generation during the previous two years, a total of 8.4 billion coming in. All of this, like from Amplus, Zero Fusion Energy, Renewable Power, Adani Engineering, these all are looking at uh, the sectors of uh, non biomass based. Coming to uh, the energy space and what does it does, if you see the energy demand in India, the renewable is about 13%, and we take it to the agro waste based only being 9%, with the infusion of the CBG projects and also the ethanol projects coming in. This 9% on your scheme at the right bottom is obviously going to enhance. The percentage of biomass generation by the type of biomass in the country is, as you can see, so the largest aggregation occurs from a rice crop, which also is a pain point for loose uh, burning in the open fields. These are the kind of biomass which are currently available, which we can count upon as per the estimates made by various agencies. And these are the future residual uh, production in million tons, which you can see is available. So, huge potential there. 
uh, for us to have uh, industry, whether basically is biomass IPP or ethanol projects or CBG, we count in on the biomass stream. These are the potential uses of the biomass, and you see the, the later half, which is from the crematorium to furniture, hotel, utensil, boat packaging, etc. These are also certain sectors which are gained on the ground, they require less biomass. But in terms of quantities of industry which you can create around them, there's a huge possibility to use the biomass here as well. In so far as PESPEL is concerned, we have a vision to remain the largest entrepreneurial biomass production company of the country. And we do it with uh, all opportunities which come our way. We help the government of the day with policy initiations, and we also have a very definite line to adhere to compliances and HSE, EHE norms as well. Our journey, if you see, uh, through the last uh, few years, starting from 2011 in the center there, where this was created, has been quite uh, forward integrating in terms of both technology and concepts of operation and creating new verticals. So we started off with supply chains, we went into bricketing, we are now doing steam plants, we're looking at CBG, we're looking at supply chain again, in a very large measure to industry in CBG and the ethanol sector. If you look at the bottom left part of the screen, you will see our investors, impact investor responsibility who has carried on in our, in our portfolio in the company. SBI Neve, a sovereign money of uh, UK as well as uh, uh, SBI and the Indian uh, component. It has uh, invested as a Series B in 2019. Shell has invested as a strategic partner in 2019. And this August, we had a strategic investment from Mitsui, uh, Japan as well. 2021 is basically shaping into three sectors as you see on the right bottom slide. Uh, the CBG sector, and the biofuel sector, and the sustainable aviation fuel sector. In this order of implementation, the CBG projects will come up faster, followed by uh, the biofuels. And SAF is still in a stage for policy for formulation and intervention by the government of India. And that should take about nearly six to eight months more to get done. Our cards you know, extend throughout Pan India, so you can see where the spell is and what kind of. Uh, of which stock we are dealing with literally everything which is produced as a waste from the earth, we are there to pick it up. Our enterprise model is primarily based on village level entrepreneurs, and in that we, we do the supply chain through selected VLEs, as we call them. And this hub and spoke model is quite an innovative model which ensures that in a small, secluded place, you are able to create hubs, create impression centers, and make the biomass in whatever form factor is required. And the raw pellets, pellet, or whatsoever, it is available to the industry for use, whether it's for burning, whether it's for conversion to biofuels and such like. So we do the entire value chain right from the farm to the factory, and, and we are in the corporate structure, one of the leading players today in the country. Our canvas of operations, like I said, supply chain management, recovery plants, operation maintenance of boilers, and in the future is going to be the CBG projects. A boot model we currently do a couple of projects. Uh, for the boiler sets segment, and we will see, and we are in touch with a lot of the investors and technology players to do it for CBG as well. We also do a very niche and marquee kind of a biomass study in our company for everybody who's investing in India into CBG and Brazil. Now, we are there to do the study and give you uh, the availability of biomass at one hand, and on the other hand, give you a supply chain management model which we can stand by for the next 10 15 years at the cost and price points which we decide. Now, seeing is believing, as they say, and these photographs will tell you uh, at what level of uh, the supply chain management are we involved. So right from the field where we aggregate, take it in our own qualities and use our own equipment. Uh, we create variant channel partners for development. The person you see on the screen is the person who came into our wheelie structure, the one with the folded hand, about a year and a half back. And today, behind him is the assets which he currently owns. And that is the kind of fillip it is given to the rural economy and rural sector in terms of jobs and giving them income. This is traditionally a one of the collection centers. Uh, there are actually four of them here on the picture. You see the picketing plants uh, we have. Uh, all kinds of equipment we have. Biomass comes to us on cows, on camels, and trucks and tractors. So we are in the rural depth of the country on an end basis. Uh, this is our marketing plant, uh, per se, which is inaugurated by the Honorable Minister, Chief Minister of Punjab uh, in, in December last year. Uh, it's an automated plant completely, and the first one, 100 tons per day, rice-based, packaged raw based plant uh, to offset the problem statement of open burning of paddy in the fields. This is another bigger plant, again, automated plant, which produces very good quality of uh, corn-based, maize corn, corn Similarly, this is Haveri, where we have a mixed plant, 
uh, which has got a line in which the preference per day is produced of varied kinds of feedstock which we put through. This is a Kampura berry in Rajasthan. Uh, this is the stocking and planning what we do all around the year of our customers and clients who are in the ONM section so that they have a continued flow of uh, this commodity even in the monsoons which are a little more in the southern part of the country. Neat and clean fuel storage, as you can see, we make nice plates, and that is why we survive in the market. It's another getting here on the bottom right side. Uh, we put a lot of focus, given the investors from Shell and Matsui, and also the British government involved. Uh, we ourselves are now refining our ESG standards and trying to get projects and everything going in all our locations. In the good side, we also invest in the boiler. It comes money. This is one of the first projects in Punjab. This was made by Prespel. This is run by Prespel, including the fuel supply system and also the ash handling. We are committed to the point, and this is the bottom left you see. This is where the ash, which is taken out from the boiler, goes for an end use. Some of the uses are for fertilizer industry and other places. Uh, we follow the global ether standards and training forms part of that as well. Uh, this is one snapshot of the ash handling, how we are taking care of it. And all the norms of the patient control board, and whatever are the problem statements of any state where the stubble burning is taking place, this well is setting up and, and giving all options of bioenergy currently in the market. This is one of the key projects we did based on loose biomass in Sun Pharma, which is in Punjab, in India. If you see this, the data on the left, the GHG reduction is by approximately 24,000 metric tons of carbon. And 100% availability of this boiler was during the COVID season without a break of a single minute. And this is the boiler, how it looks. And all kinds of practice from mustard husk, rice husk, and, and components of woody chips go into this. Here, there's a structure step. The energy savings are colossal in, in such kind of an endeavor. And if you see, uh, nearly 22% is the energy saving in comparison to. Uh, a, a conventional boiler when you put a biomass based boiler. This is again the same, same boiler. This is a typical fuel system which we have right from collection at the practice stage, making it into bales, going into transportation, into the depots, cutting off the fuel and feeding it to the boiler. This is a, a, a process which we follow. There are many such processes leading ahead. We take care of the entire pre harvest and poor harvest waste. Uh, contingencies which are involved in this particular value chain. And if you see the photographs, these photographs are traditionally all of the spell, nothing from the internet, nothing from the global market. Broadly, when you see this supply chain, which is top based, the tax requirement goes to about nearly 3 million in terms of uh, uh, dollars uh, for entire equipment to be procured and put to field for nearly a lakh metric tons. So if you're traditionally looking at ethanol to under 2 lakh metric tons, the tax is going to be double. In terms of the jobs, 730 jobs in the straw based economy is created per day with an average of 2,500 US dollars going into the pockets of the farmers and contributing towards the rural benefits itself. The income, largely about 60 to 65% of our income, is actually distributed to the farmers, and the financial inclusion is attained also by the electronic transfer of money without hand changing any money at all. So, this is the entire prediction if you see the sustainable development goals which Neo talked about. All 17 fit to the team. These are the niche clients in various segments of our operations. If you look at these names, some in the pipelines, some ongoing, you will see that uh, we, we are actually involved with many technology players and many big oil major companies of the world. Crespel is leading market primarily because we are the largest organized player and we have a reduction in price of volatility, continuous supply, and steady biomass availability for products in any form factor across India. These are the key impacts which we have with our operations. If you go through that carbon footprint, go to name, maybe you know you can see how much aggregation we are doing. It's increasing by the, by the day. We have nearly doubled that in the last two years in terms of our aggregation. On terms, women are getting employed, green jobs are being generated, and that is the way we are looking at the future when we are looking at the CBC market and the ethanol plant. Huge social and financial benefits as well. This is something which Dr. Nino will align to. And this is what is happening in the economy, in the rural sector of India as well. So this daily generation, job generation, and this new source of revenue for the farmer, even if his field goes back with the uh, crop, uh, the waste is such that he will be able to earn money from that. Uh, these are the avenues which are available in the renewable energy sector. This well does all of these uh, value chains uh, which I mentioned in the avenue. That's the best uh, handle for social media and uh, our website. And uh, we 
take a lot of pride in the supply chain management as well. If you would like to you know, engage with us or me personally, the coordinates are given on the slide. You can just come this. Visit our website at www.lucasplay.com. You can find me at my email ID given here on LinkedIn or LinkedIn or Twitter or whichever you should make a platform you have. And I'm happy to be very happy to you know, interact with you. Our company, which has come through 2013, only taking awards, we also got the award this year, which I'm going to put here. And the cake here is the 2020 award for UNDP. Sustainable Development Code Climate Change Action Awards, and which we take a lot of pride in contributing towards greener environment, better health, and a better future for our citizens and also the globe. And with that, thank you, and thank you. And anybody who would like me to you know, uh, convey something more beyond this and ask me any question, I would have to take it on. Thank you. Right. That's it. I have finished. I have given a minute less than what I promised. So please, anybody got a question? I'm happy to answer. My pleasure. Thank you. It's been a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. God be kind.